Hassan is the biggest political streamer on Twitch. America deserved 9-11, dude. We fucking totally brought it on ourselves, dude. Holy shit. He's a socialist who routinely criticizes the rich while spending money on extravagant luxuries of his own. La, 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 wait till I get my money right. He owns a $200,000 luxury Porsche, living in a $3 million luxury home. Hassan often relies on using other people's content to entertain his viewers, either when he's too tired to entertain or he's cooking or eating, when people confront him or offer solutions on how to go about in the future, like pausing the video when he's not there, or giving proper credit to the creator while reacting. He dismisses it, using over-the-top exaggerations to make the concession seem unreasonable. Dude, what am I supposed to do? Die? Like, I don't understand. Yes, die. That is clearly what that comment is demanding of you. But when people clip him using his content in a way he doesn't like, he threatens to strike them. Why are they clipping me then? Like, if my own fucking clip channels are clipping all of my videos to make money, why are you fucking clipping wrong information then? If that's the case. And then fuck you, dude. Don't make me DMCA your bitch asses. Everything I said about Biden is true, you fucking idiot! It's always that. Do you think black people? What a fucking liar, dude. When I compared the quartering to Saad, I wasn't exaggerating. They're both people that will pander to their team at all cost. Two sides of the same coin. It's like looking into a mirror. Seriously, you should do it. You need to. I I'm a big guy. I get sweaty. You know, you get that crotch rot. Well, don't stress, Jeremy. I have the solution for you. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service. And just like how Netflix lets you watch hundreds of TV shows and movies, Scentbird allows you to receive colognes and perfumes from over 600 brands. Carrying everything from indie labels like Vince Camuto and The Harmonist to top designer brands like Prada, Gucci, and Versace. Ladies and gentlemen, look at these cool and stylish samples they send you. You just twist, pull out the perfumer cologne, and notice it's a lot of product. This is a 30-day supply. This month, they sent me Brioni's Intense, Confessions of a Rebel from Get a Room, and surprisingly, my favorite's been Gucci's Made to Measure. It's got that fresh, cool ocean smell. It's sexy. I'll be wearing it on date night with the lady. Whereas the Brioni has a bit more of that professional scent. You might use it when going to work or with the family. Definitely more subtle. They got these great brochures that come with the product, showing you the different ingredients, the smells. If you find something you really like, Scentford will remember your previous his purchases. And if you're ever not sure what you're looking for, they have this unique quiz you can take that'll hook you up with the right stuff. And this stuff comes at a great price. I've seen the same colognes online selling for well over $100. Scentbird is only a $16 a month subscription. Instead of buying one nice bottle of cologne or perfume, you can get a whole year's supply of Scentbird and it'll be those same great brands. Be sure to use code WillieMac55 with the link in the description to get 55% off your first month. That's luxury brands for both men and women for only $7. Never be bored of your scent again. You scent birds save hundreds of dollars, get rid of those expensive half-used cologne and perfume bottles. You will look good, feel good, and smell amazing. Thank you, Scentbird, for sponsoring this video. So where did we leave off? Oh yeah, Hassan. <laughs> we gotta find Hassan is a political streamer, the most popular by far, and look, I'm not someone who claims to be very knowledgeable about politics, but even to me, it seems like he has some pretty crazy takes. What the fuck? What the fuck is wrong with this dude? Didn't he go to war and like literally lose his eye because some Mujahideen, a brave fucking soldier, fucked his eye hole with their dick? Isn't that how he lost his fucking dumbass eye? Because he got his fucking eye hole fucked by a brave soldier? Yeah, Hassan sounds like a very reasonable guy, somebody I definitely would want to run the world. His pitch for a more civilized utopia sounds amazing. I am an advocate, and I am of the mindset that civilized countries allow its citizens to fucking brawl with cops. Yes, this sounds very civilized. The only countries outside of the United States where people can't fucking brawl with cops are dictatorships. I think it shows, I think it shows that it is a civilized country if citizens Womp. have the same level of rights and protection under whatever constitution they believe in where, uh, you know, they can fucking brawl with cops. Can you really just brawl with cops in the UK and Canada? That sounds unlikely to me. If you can't already tell, Hassan likes to take some polarizing stances on things, where he will talk about his opinion as if it is the only acceptable take. This gets him into some sticky situations at times. When US intelligence said that Russia's invasion of the Ukraine was imminent, Hassan was skeptical. What's up, folks? I'm live and alive, and we got a lot to talk about. I was right about Ukraine, that's right. 
War is not imminent. Oh, shocked. Shocked to find out. Anyway, we're going to talk about that and a bunch of other stuff, so get in now. But honestly, saying Hassan was skeptical is completely underselling his verbiage. You would have thought he had his own intelligence agency feeding him information with how confident he sounded. I think maybe I'll tell my editors to do this, but I think I'll just change like... I'll change this every day to Ukraine is still has still not been invaded by Russia every day. Change it to Russia still has yet to invade Ukraine. And it's like day 11 at this point. You know what I mean? He says that like it means something. What? Is he complaining that they're late? Guys, it's been 11 days. What more proof do we need? They'll never invade. 11 days? Too long. He was posting J Station memes, making fun of people who were worried about imminent war. And when Russia finally did it, making his coverage look utterly ridiculous, you'd think he'd apologize for going about things so arrogantly. And to be fair, he kind of did. The video was titled, I was wrong about Ukraine. So does he actually admit that he got stuff wrong? Yeah, I mean, he's got little choice, but in the same video, he simultaneously continues to make claims about the conflict that he has no way of knowing about, and ultimately would be proven wrong again. The reason why I'm saying a lot of the information that's coming out of the State Department is wrong or outright false is because what I'm showing you right now is literally fucking uh, people talking about like bombing Kiev, okay? Their take was Ukraine is going to be invaded. Kiev is going to be invaded by Russia. That is insane. That's psychotic. So in his apology video for his arrogant and baseless predictions on Ukraine, Hassan makes more arrogant and baseless predictions on Ukraine. Only Hassan, dude. He's also taken weird stances like condemning his chat for comparing Putin to Hitler. You feeling bad about the Crimean annexation does not change the reality of the Crimean annexation being a completely justifiable fucking act by the Russian government, okay? So that's it. That's fine. And Hitler invaded countries based on Germanic ties at first. Yeah, dude. Talk to me when he's fucking throwing Ukrainians in a, in a, in a fucking... What are you talking about? Talk to me when he's throwing Ukrainians at a concentration camp, okay? Hitler wasn't fucking bad because he decided to invade Austria. He was bad because he was fucking killing Jews, okay? That was the problem. He wasn't like, he wasn't like, oh yeah, we're gonna fucking annex territory with like Germanic people in it. That wasn't the main problem with Hitler, I think. Who says this? He seems more passionate about this than the actual invasion. That wasn't the main problem with Hitler, I think. That was like maybe eighth down the line. Well, I'm glad we cleared that up. I made out with so many girls. Made out with every girl in the world. If you can't tell, Hassan is very stubborn. He likes to argue, so he often gets caught up on weird, seemingly insignificant things. You see, cracker is a really important word to Hassan. He spent an awkward amount of time trying to explain why it's a cool word to use. Slur cracker is not a slur. Cracker is not a slur. Cracker is not a slur. Sussy. It, is it? Is it not? It's not. It's not? No, of course not. Cracker is... The way you said is so loud. <laughs> Cracker is, uh, has, even in its etymology, it's something I've talked about so many times too, because it's like, white boys love fucking saying like, Cracker is the same as the N-word, Cracker is the same as the N-word, right? Um, it's really stupid. It's not like, the etymology of the word is different. Like, cracker means literally whip cracker. It comes from whip cracker. So the they power still is in the hands the of the white person in that situation. Just... It's true. Us white people, we love being called crackers. I feel completely empowered by it. Jokes aside, Hassan would use the word in a way at times that could be interpreted as hateful. Did I say, oh my God, saltine cracker. Like, people are just bitter because it's saltine cracker. That's not what I, that's not what I said, you dumb cracker bitch. I don't give a shit if he calls people crackers. I just think his logic is hilariously bad. This tweet of his is one of my all-time favorites. Absolutely insane. Twitch banned two of my mods for using the word cracker. One is black and the other one is brown. Does Twitch actually believe cracker is a slur? What is the logic behind pointing out that they're black and brown? I feel like that makes it worse. Like if they were two white guys, I get it. That makes more sense. But this, it would make more sense not to bring up their race at all. He went through this phase where he tried to act like all these creators agreed with him on it when they clearly didn't. What do you think about the word cracker? <laughs> the what? The word cracker. What do I think about the word cracker? Two of my mods got banned for uh, saying cracker uh, yesterday in a sequence of uh, in like three minutes. This fucking guy. Um, I don't use it personally. Oh. I'd rather describe people with things that aren't just broad stroke derogatory terms based off the color of their skin. Pokemane had to bait him into talking about something else because he was getting so riled up about it. I've been a sub to Hassan for more than two years, but it's about time the community's bubble got popped. The whole you can't be racist towards X group argument isn't perceived well in the real world where we actually live in the struggle. Bro. 
Have you seen this one video on YouTube? No, th this person no, 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 no. has literally really, never been around really black people. Video, I promise you. Here's the person who does not have a single black or brown time. friend. Okay, what is it? What Hassan did right there is how he dismisses every argument that disagrees with him. He exaggerates, refuses to actually engage in the conversation, and usually just shoves words in the other person's mouth. Here's the person who does not have a single black or a brown time. friend. You dumb cracker bitch. What are you talking about? Talk to me when he's throwing Ukrainians at a concentration camp, okay? I don't think he's ever in engaged in a good faith argument, he's perfect for politics. I've already touched on Hassan's lack of understanding when it comes to copyright. He will play other people's videos on stream when he's not even in the room. He does this so often, people are able to make 45 minute compilations of his chair or him just eating, not transforming the video at all. He usually won't even provide proper credit for the video. His excuses are laughable. I don't know, maybe because I'm live for fucking eight hours and sometimes I'm not literally in front of the camera while the fucking video is playing. 19. And when people like JXE give honest arguments for why they think that's wrong, Hassan, in usual fashion, will be quick to dismiss the point entirely, using some of the most brain-dead logic I've ever heard. On him, how is it any different than him just watching a YouTube video off stream? It just rubs me the wrong way. Like, how do you think of your viewers to just stream your break? what am I supposed to do? Die? Like, I don't understand. This is Hassan. It doesn't matter if it's a serious issue like Ukraine or a simple complaint about how he reacts to videos. He will always dumb down his critics' arguments to such a laughable level where it's hard to tell if he's being dishonest or if he's actually just that stupid. He could leave a sign saying, gone for a dump back in five or could just give credit where it's due and actually react while he's in the room. Doesn't seem like a lot to ask. These motherfuckers are like, a dude, peanut bottle, dude. No, you fucking glue eater. Just pause the video till you get back from the bathroom. Engage with it. Give proper credit. This stuff is so simple. When Hassan makes false equivalencies, sometimes people in his chat call him out for it. Even when he reads it, though, he doesn't engage. He just chooses to ignore them then. I'm right and you're wrong, okay? I'm right. And you're wrong if you don't recognize that. Now, is there a difference between playing a video game on stream and playing a, a, a TV show on stream? Yes. Not really. No. Yeah, but a video game's point is the interaction watching a video doesn't give that. Great point. I wonder how Hassan will answer that. Yeah, but a video game's point is the interaction watching a video doesn't give that. People have gotten clap for game streaming before. He doesn't. He chooses to ignore it and read another chat message. Here's the best part. When people start infringing on Hassan's copyright in a way that he no longer likes, then it's all cool to strike people. Yeah, I've been noticing it's been hella toxic. Even clip channels are being annoying and commenting in the description on how you're wrong. Why are they clipping me then? Like, if my own fucking clip channels are clipping all of my videos to make money... Why are you fucking clipping wrong information then? Because you look like an ass. It shows how much shit you spew out of your mouth. Then fuck you, dude. Don't make me DMCA your bitch asses. Motherfuckers are literally posting my YouTube videos uh, from my fucking Twitch, stealing this shit because I allow them to so they can make money off of it just to make me look fucking bad or shit on me? What the fuck is this? Send me all the videos. Okay? Send me all the fucking videos of the Hasanabi uh, Clips Industrial Complex. Uh, uh, talking shit. And I will fucking destroy them. I will purge them. Crazy how he's all for getting rid of copyright laws until it starts affecting him negatively. Fucking classic. But she's so nice. But she's so nice. But she's so nice. Nicholas DiOrio has been making a full-fledged documentary breaking down Hassan's career. And when I told him I was making my video, he specifically sent me these clips to use. So, I'm not going to, for instance, um, I'll use Hassan as an example. I'm not going to talk to a black person like Trihex and say, hey, the N-word, it's always black. What do you think black people have? What a fucking liar, dude. What a fucking Weasley little liar, dude. What a fucking Weasley little liar, dude. Holy shit, dude. Excuse me. Holy fucking shit, control, dude. Even when he's just playing a game, he'll get so mad he'll just freak out, start punching his couch in his underwear.
This inspires me. I want to make him this angry. His cringe has been documented on Reddit and YouTube for years. The man's a self-proclaimed socialist that takes 100% of the profit from the labor of others. Whether it's stealing videos for downtime on his streams, or not paying editors who are uploading content on his YouTube channel. The dude's dishonest in conversations, acts in bad faith. He refuses to engage with anyone who shares a different opinion. He is the quartering, except instead of wanting to fuck cartoons, he acts like an expert in whatever political topic is trending that day. He is Hassan Piker. <laughs> That will be it for today, comrades. Thank you for watching. Shout out to Nicholas Diorio for helping me out this video. And of course, the comrades on Patreon. Phoebes, Crimson Glass, Zombie Fox, Riveter, Latchkey Gothboy, Jack Mac, Christina Vina, Mac Monkey, and the Mega Comrades. Reynold Hughes, Marissa Lynn, IGP, Anonymity, Hellison, Bald Boy Ajax, Yuri Kinda Pog, Jason Johnson, George is Lost, Your Taxi, Spartan McCowell, Free Spirit Katie, Detective Pika, and Lore Reloaded. It is truly humbling seeing just how big the Patreon has got. You guys allow me to make the kind of videos I want want to make without having to worry about YouTube's monetization system. Follow me on Twitter and as always, till next time. But she's so nice, but she's so nice, but she's so nice. But she's so nice, but she's so nice, but she's so nice. I treat her badly, but she comes back every time. It goes to show that none of these hoes are worth a dime. But she's so nice, but she's so nice, but she's so nice. But she's so nice, but she's so nice, but she's so nice.